and now i'm going to pull this motorcycle a little hard so just have a look on two things look at the vibrations that you see on the handlebar and look at the way how this motorcycle is delivering the power so let's do that so i'm planning to take a different route and let's see whether we can take some off roads what's up youtube welcome to the detailed review of the new himalayan so got this motorcycle for a ride for some days and i've been using inside city for some time as well as i've been taking it on the highway some tours so today i thought that i'll just make a video on this motorcycle so i wanted to do this video in a different style because there are not much major upgrades from the previous version so i wanted to quickly make a note of the changes which has been uh, made on this motorcycle and i'll talk about my experience with those and after that we'll go with the regular review so you don't have to waste your time if you have already seen my uh, previous bs6 himalayan review so yes the major change which has got with the new himalayan is the new paint scheme there are three paint schemes now so one is a metallic black which looks damn good i was looking forward for that motorcycle but unfortunately i didn't got that then there's a silver one which also equally looks good and then this camo green color so in fact i like this color in person but looking onto the photos i thought it's something like a fluorescent green or something but it looks really good in real so that's the first change and the second change is with this rail so this rail has been cut short so that tall riders won't be having any problems keeping their knee over there and the next major difference is bringing this meter from the meteor to this dial so i have to say that yes royal enfield has done a good job <laughs> but i feel like they could have integrated it to the system it almost feels like you have added it in the last moment but uh, it would have been nice to see a display which actually integrate to the whole system but i have used this this works fine no problem with it and the next major change which i liked in the motorcycle is the visor so in order to accommodate that navigation assistance the wind visor has gone taller as well as broader so uh, with the previous himalayan i was finding the visor to be comfortable from uh, till a speed of uh, 90 now it has almost gone to 100 or 105 So in that sense the new windscreen is a really really good feature when it comes to the new Himalayan. And one more thing I have to say is that this display is only for navigation. You cannot attend calls or you cannot see any messages even though you connect your uh, mobile phone to this dash with the bluetooth. And the next change is on to the seat. So Royal Enfield has changed the padding on the seat and as far as I believe I think I already like the seat of the previous Himalayan. They made this seat more comfortable. I'm finding it very comfortable cruising on the highway. So that's it. and when it comes to the tail section they have given this kind of uh, bottom plate so you use this plate to mount your luggage so previously it was a grab rail kind of a thing where you can tie your uh, stuff on this one it will feel a little more comfortable to tie your luggage and one major thing is like you don't have to struggle a lot to set up your top box so you can use these four screws to set your top box and uh, have a comfortable ride So that's a quick walk around of the changes on the new Himalayan. So now let's get into the detailed review of the Himalayan. So yes, with the previous version itself, I always like the Himalayan for how it is because Himalayan is something different from all the other adventure motorcycles, be it the Xpulse 200 or the KTM series or the BMW G310 GS. Uh, Himalayan has its own place just because of this engine. It's not because of the CC. It's just because how the engine works. Out of all these motorcycles, Himalayan is the only long stroke engine. where it gives a very nice and sweet torque when you want to off road not just off road even when you want to ride it in the side city this engine gives a different feel yeah the ktm 390 or the bmw g310 gs will be faster on the highway i agree to that fact but if you want to peacefully ride the motorcycle in a 100 speed and all then this is a very wonderful motorcycle and when it comes to the off roading this motorcycle has got enough and more the torque and the ergonomics everything is just beautiful to take it off the road so looking onto the styling i always like the way how himalayan looks this is the first royal enfield motorcycle which came out of royal enfield uh, breaking all the stereotypes so from then itself like i think back in 2016 when the first himalayan got launched i always love the looks of the himalayan it gives a a bigger stance it's a bigger motorcycle even though the seating is not that tall it's a very big motorcycle it gives you a very nice feel that you are riding a slightly bigger motorcycle compared to other commuter motorcycles and it also feels it's a bit heavy okay so when we get on the motorcycle it's not a tall motorcycle you can see that from here almost planted foot on both sides and the seat is a bit wide which gives you a lot of butt room and i like it if you push a little bit backwards then 
they gain more butt room <laughs> so the handlebar is nice and wide it gives a great confidence only one thing is when it is rolling in the slower speeds you'll be feeling the weight of the motorcycles otherwise when it starts going above 20 km per hour speed and all you don't feel the weight of the motorcycle the dash the new setup uh, adding the tripper meter uh, it has pretty much everything that's what i have to say let's look on to the things so this is the speedometer tachometer fuel level indicator the fuel level indicator is not that accurate because when it reaches a 25% mark and all it just go down to the low fuel warning and this is the compass and what you can see over here is the uh, time the ambient temperature uh, the gear position indicator the odometer two trip meters and the average speed for that trip yeah that's it pretty much basic and what you see over here is the abs switch where you can switch off the abs for the rear wheel so that's it with the things on the dash so let's go for the ride that's the sound of that long stroke engine it's really nice to spin the rear wheel and take it like that i really really love that okay i know that you guys didn't see that because there is no camera on the back but it's really nice and uh, himalayan actually belongs to this kind of a place where you have lot of off roads I, i know that i'm repeating the word off road many number of times in this video as of now but i have to say that this is a motorcycle where you can take anywhere not just off road city highway off roads everywhere and now i'm going to pull this motorcycle a little hard so just have a look on two things look at the vibrations that you see on the handlebar and look at the way how this motorcycle is delivering the power so let's do that I think you yourself saw what I wanted to show you. So the refinement level on the new Himalayan, not just this Himalayan, the previous version also, is really really good. Looking from the previous version of the Himalayan, I really appreciate the fact that Royal Enfield has worked, has spent their time in working on the engine to make the motorcycle more refined. So the vibrations are very very minimal when you really redline into the core. So the redline on this motorcycle is 6.5 k rpm. It's a long stroke engine, not like the regular 150 cc sports bike. you will hit the cut off at 6.5 k rpm uh, the sweet spot on the motorcycle is like somewhere between 3 to 4 k rpm and in any gear you don't really have any kind of vibration coming on to the handlebar or on the seat when you really rev it to the nuts you can feel that slight buzz on the foot peg that's all i hope you might have seen the mirror as well the mirror doesn't vibrate at all so that's it with the engine side and when you sit on the motorcycle you have an absolutely comfortable riding stance how am i sitting is that keeping my spine straight having good control on the motorcycle with a wider handlebar the foot peg is slightly forward set which give me a really nice stance i really love the placement of the foot peg because when you want to stand on the foot peg and ride you can easily do that you see that in this riding stance i can hug the tank with my knee so that's something really good when you go for a long ride so coming on to the brakes i'll say that the brake feels a bit spongy but it has enough stopping power for this motorcycle by the way this motorcycle is comfortable to ride between a speed of 80 and 100 km per hour and uh, the braking on the motorcycle is really apt for those speeds on the highway and also the new windscreen is adding more and more comfort to the ride i'm going in a uh, speed of 80 km per hour let's push a little more ahead so it's almost 100 km per hour so the wind pocket is somewhere here so the wind is coming somewhere here and just touching my helmet that's all so even at 100 km per hour i don't have any buffeting issues there was a slight problem with the previous windscreen just after 90 km per hour and all uh the window almost feels like slapping your face so it it was doing like this so i really didn't like that kind of a uh, visor but this one has a more curvy design which actually gives a lot of comfort so the best part of this motorcycle is the suspension the long travel suspension is like next level after taking this motorcycle i haven't slowed down in any potholes or humps i really love to ride this motorcycle like that not just himalayan beat any off roading motorcycle I don't really slow down at humps or uh, slow down at the potholes. What I do is like I'll just take it and see whether the motorcycle can be easily controlled. 
So even after jumping through bigger speed breakers and all, the motorcycle was under control only. And I'm not trying to inspire anyone to do these things. Okay, I'm just trying to test the motorcycle. So as a part of that, I do all these stuff. So this new Himalayan costs something like two lakhs extra room, and maintaining it is like uh, the first service is obviously in 500 kilometers, and after that, it goes for service once in 10,000 kilometers, costing something like uh, 3,000 rupees for a paid service. So which is not bad, uh, looking at the service intervals as well. and when it comes to the mileage uh, the owners have uh, mixed opinion because if you are hitting the off roads very often then you will be getting a mileage something like 20 to 25 and in side city you'll get something like 25 to 30 and when it comes to the highway and if you are cruising at the speed of 80 km per hour probably you'll be getting a good mileage from 30 to 35 and this being a adventure motorcycle i don't have to really worry about the ground clearance of this motorcycle But what you have to worry about the motorcycle when you take it uh, inside city is the uh, turning radius as well as uh, taking U turns. So I already mentioned that this is slightly a heavier motorcycle, so taking a sharp turn is not that bad at all. Looking at the weight, it's not that bad. But when you compare with the other motorcycles, the other adventure motorcycles, it might be a little bit hard. That's all. So I'm planning to take a different route, and let's see whether we can take some off roads. So this motorcycle is an instant planner. Okay, you can <laughs> change your plans at any time uh, when you when you ride this motorcycle because it goes everywhere. Now I'm sitting on the motorcycle and going through some off roads, not too hard. But what I can see is that the motorcycle has good comfort even when I'm sitting. And obviously, when I stand on the foot peg, I have. A lot of control on the motorcycle and a lot of comfort. Sometimes it's a bit spooky to get into these kind of pocket roads and go inside. It's not good. I mean, I could see. someone sitting over there and uh, like a group of people sitting over there and uh, boosting that's fine but yes you have to be a bit careful so you might have seen <laughs> i just took a u turn so fast on this motorcycle when i saw a bunch of people boosting over there that's fine uh, so it's not too hard to uh, take a u turn on this motorcycle okay so it's just a matter of getting used to it so if you ask me if it's a beginner bike Uh, I'll say that not that so much beginner friendly just because of the weight and how the motorcycle handles. But certainly, if you are having some experience on a scooter or a bit of experience on a 150 cc motorcycle, definitely you'll be able to control this motorcycle. Like no issues. So coming onto the gearbox and the clutch, what I feel is that it's a moderately set clutch. It's not too hard, neither too soft. So it's really good to use inside city or on the highway. And when it comes to the gearbox. It's a slightly tighter gearbox, but very crisp. This is what I told. I don't have to slow down anywhere. And when it comes to the tire, it comes with bigger wheels. So we have an open road here. Let's pull it a little hard. the fifth gear is almost acting like a cruising gear here so the fourth gear itself will push it to the 120 km per hour mark and after that it just slightly moves ahead that's all and it will, i think it will take a lot of time to reach the 140 so yes i was talking about the tires the tires are giving good confidence when i go for off roads and all and when it comes to on road straight line stability is good but if you wanted to really do cornering then i'll say you have to look for something different And one thing which I noticed when I was riding inside the city is that the heating is kind of okay. Once the motorcycle is rolling, you don't have any heating issue as such. But when you are going inside city, when in dead traffic, stop and go traffic, yes, it's a slightly bigger engine, so it dissipates some heat, and you have to deal with it. So now let's see who can look onto this motorcycle, the adventure motorcycle from Royal Enfield. So if you are looking for a good city motorcycle, I'll say that if your city has lot of potholes, lot of humps, <laughs> lot of bad roads, you can definitely look onto this motorcycle. <laughs> if you are inside city road is something like this, then what I'll say is that you are not going to truly use the potential of the motorcycle. It's a good city motorcycle, no problem. I mean, you can filter it. Not as good as a 150 cc motorcycle, but not at all bad. 
you can ride it in whatever way you want unless you have uh, really really bad traffic like stop and go traffic then you can easily use inside city if you are looking for a highway tourer very very nice motorcycle the seating comfort is good be it the rider seat or the pillion seat you have really nice comfort from the seat the ergonomics are good you can easily cruise from a speed of 80 km to 100 km per hour and this motorcycle has a lot of accessories man so definitely you can buy those things and set it up and uh, you can have all your luggage tied up and with the new back setup you really don't have to buy panniers or top box and all you can just keep your luggage over there and tie with the bungee cords so that's with the highway part and when it comes to the off roads that's where this motorcycle is going to outshine every other motorcycle so off road is the place that himalayan is going to shine a lot because the suspension travel the way this motorcycle handles the kind of ergonomics you have when you stand on the foot peg it's really really nice so in that sense i'll say that an all rounder motorcycle now you could ask me that you cannot take the himal into the track yeah that's of course understandable it's not a track motorcycle but it can do everything else and budget friendly so that's it with this quick review on the royal enfield himalayan uh, and hope you like this video and as always show some love in the form of likes and comments see you in the next video until then bye bye